Welcome to The Read Along. A mini book club for your ears. I'm your host, Scott. I'm your other host, Anita. And join us on a journey through a good book, one one chapter chapter at a time. time. Do you like talking about movies? Do you like talking about mediocre movies? Do you like talking about how you could have fixed mediocre movies? Well, I certainly do, and you can listen to me, Scott C. Bourgeois, along with my co-hosts Greg Beaver and Liam Kreswick, as we give our notes, and I have some notes. You can follow it now on your podcatcher of choice, or support it by visiting patreon.com slash I have some notes. We're sneaking in uh, an earlier recording than normal because we've Shh, got... don't tell anybody. We've got a... No, we're still following the rules. We're recording basically as uh, the previous episode is posted. And that's because we have a very busy long weekend coming up. And it dawned on us that our usual recording day is pretty much a write-off because of that. Yep. So we were like, oh no. So we quickly read the new chapter. Yep. Like this morning and our recording... This today. afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> it's it's a little out of order for us, but uh, we are still, of course, as I said, following our rules. Yeah. So. No, no cheating. We're just recording out of sync, which is a little weird for us. For, yeah. For you, you wouldn't know unless Scott told you, which he did. Yeah. Right? It doesn't matter. That's, but here we are. <laughs> yeah. Well, that said, part of the reason I mention it is because things might be a little more scattered than normal because neither of us have had a chance to really sit on the chapter. It's true. I only finished reading it like half an hour ago. Not yeah. even... And I read it immediately before you did. Things haven't been, like, processed yeah. completely. So yeah. so this is going to be a very, like, shotgun episode. It's going to be all <laughs> over the place. Just us talking about stuff. I guess we'll just kind of get into it then with yes, a yes, brief let's. recap of Chapter 16 of our novel in which uh, the Queen and Rosie take a ride. Uh, we learn a little bit more about Rosie's background, uh, or at least her family background, and that causes... A brainstorm <laughs> at the same time that a thunderstorm It's a happens. real storm. Yeah. And uh, the queen realizes that it's very possible that the Dr. Rachel Styles she met at the clandestine meeting may in fact not have been the real person. Dun, dun, dun. And that leads us into chapter 17 of The Winds Are Not by S.J. Bennett. So the chapter opens with Rosie just right chuffed. <laughs> How very British of you. Uh, they did get rained on a bit, but she had a great time riding. Oh, yeah. She had a marvelous time out on the ride together. Yeah. And she liked the horse, even though he was a little headstrong. Yeah, but she liked him anyway. And uh, the queen was like, hey, anytime you have some free time, you want to take him out for a ride, you're more than welcome. And Rosie is just over the moon. Right? She's, got, she's a glow. It's like one level shy of just being gifted a horse. Right? Like, she is allowed to ride one of the queen's horses whenever she wants. She has access. Yeah. Yeah. Ah. It's good times. That's marvelous. Yeah. Yeah. So they both got soaked by the rain, which is fine. So our chapter now picks up in, like, the office later, once yeah. they've both, like, cleaned up and dried off, and Her Majesty's had time under the hair dryer. Indeed. So as not to... So one does not catch a cold. Well, you've got a busy week coming up. You don't want to be sick. No, exactly. This also leads into... An opportunity for them to go over some uh, some details. Some real details, quick. Yeah. yeah. Because it's been like several hours. Rosie has had a chance to put in some questions on behalf of Her Majesty, and this is an opportunity for her to bring her up to speed on what she's found out. First and foremost, Doctor Styles would have uh, an Elizabeth Cross. Yes. Her father was in Kosovo and was killed. By an IED, so yes. the victim of terrorism. The exactly. family was awarded the Elizabeth Cross uh, on behalf of him, yep. specifically. Well, that's how the award works, Yeah, right? her, mother, her mother received it. Yes. And while Dr. Stiles does have a younger brother, when her mother passed away some years ago, she basically inherited it and inherited the uh, honor to wear it. Yeah. On behalf of her deceased father. Yes. And so the, the award is legit at the very least, but the, the queen still can't quite get over the fact that she seemed a little confused about it. But at the same time, she's like, but you know what? She would have been a kid when it was awarded. She probably wasn't present at the award ceremony. So it's almost believable. 
that she might not know. That's why this one's such a weird one. Yeah. At least for me, because on the one hand, if you fill in the blanks yourself, you can justify it. Yeah. Right? That, well, no, maybe she wasn't there. She was a child. When the award happened, she might not know a lot about the medal, but she knows she has the honor to wear it. She was probably nervous about meeting the queen. That makes sense. Yeah. But then on the other side of it, right, if you fill in the blanks the other way, you can justify it the other way as well. Yeah. Like, this is an honor. She should have, she would have known about it. She would have been proud of it. Yes, it happened when she was a child, but it's a very memorable event. Yeah, and if you don't really care about it enough to know about it, why would you wear it? Yeah, right? Exactly. And then she also was wondering, like, could this be an imposter? Could this not be the real Dr. Rachel Stiles? Rosie has done some digging online, but apparently Dr. Stiles kept a pretty low profile. Not a lot of images of her available. No, she wasn't on social media. Or any dating sites. No, she, nothing like that. She basically yeah. stayed off of the internet. She didn't even have a, a Not picture much of on, a presence. on LinkedIn. Yeah. And like so, a couple of office photos that didn't really help. Yeah. Because it's a group photo probably taken from a distance. Yeah. And right? so the queen like looks at the the photo that Rosie was able to dig up. And it's not a very good one. Well, it's the one Rosie got it from security, right? It's yeah. the one that Rachel had used in her uh, security check. And she's like, this could be the woman I met, but I'm not 100% certain. Like, something seems off about her facial features. Like, her eye color is the same. Her hair color is the same. She has the same haircut. The but, nose isn't right. But, and the chin isn't quite right. Yeah, but right. something's, something's it's, it's Natalie Portman and Kira Knightley. <laughs> they look kind of the same, but not enough. Not enough. Like, if you put them side by side, you can obviously tell them apart. But they can both pass as Queen Amidala. Like, yeah, exactly. exactly. Um, and that's that's the situation here. <laughs> yeah. Also, the queen is working on a memory she has of this woman that she didn't make note of at the time. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. She's basically following a hunch. Yeah. And, and it's a strong hunch. And she she feels like in her soul that something's wrong, but she can't prove it. She has no way to prove it whatsoever. Right. And she's like, if you ask me right now, was this person the person that I'm looking at in this photo? I would say no. And then Rosie admits that she may have messed something up um, because she called Dr. Stiles' work to do a little more investigating and basically came up with an excuse. Hey, I'm with the castle housekeeping office. We found something that belonged to Dr. Stiles after she stayed, and we just want to know if we can return it. And the office was like, Dr. Stiles was at Windsor Castle. And Rosie immediately was like, oh, right, because it was a secret, secret meeting. meeting. And that's probably bad. Well, and Rosie was operating under the assumption that the office knew about the meeting. Yeah. Even though the meeting itself was secret. On, was on the DL. That, that the office would have been aware, but apparently not. Not. And the queen is like, mm, that's not necessarily good. But we do learn a little something here. Mm. The office was surprised that she would have come to this meeting because she was out for the week before with the flu. With the flu, yeah. So she hasn't been in the office for a while. She wasn't seen prior to the meeting, and it's weird that she would have come to the meeting if she was sick. So sick that she couldn't go to work. Right. And then be just standing there, apparently fine, whining and dining with people at this meeting. Mm -hmm. So that is strange. The queen asks Rosie a couple favors here at this point. She's like, first of all, have security like triple check everything. Just to be sure. Just to be yeah. sure there wasn't like a lapse in security that night, that her credentials weren't double checked, that an imposter could have easily snuck in. Right. Number two, check with the detective chief inspector. Make sure that Dr. Stiles was amongst the people questioned. Like, yeah. was she seen after the, the meeting, basically, yes, exactly. by someone in an official capacity? And then also get in touch with my former protection guy. Billy McLaughlin. Nita's is keeping track of names when uh, I haven't had time to write them down. Which is very impressive for me because I am horrible at remembering well, names. And, and Billy was brought up before. He's a retired yeah. member of her security detail who has also helped in her investigations yes. on the deal. And she's like, give him a call. He knows people with the coroner's office because he's got links with mm -hmm. the police still. He's got networking. Just have him pass along. Hey, was there anything weird about this apparent overdose? Yeah. Like, was there anything odd that came back? Just anything. Just just the look. So Rosie goes and does that. And then the queen kind of waits for answers. And unfortunately, she doesn't get the answers she wants. She just can't seem to get a win right now. Yeah. Right? Like all the information coming in isn't really that 
helpful. Or outright contradicts her hunch. Yeah. So the first thing that comes back is Billy gets back to them about the pathology report. And it's not great. It's it's not conclusive. There is something odd. Yeah, but it's not, yeah, like you said, it's not conclusive. But ju- it's just like the the Elizabeth Cross, it is explainable. Yeah. She had an unusual amount of tranquilizers in her blood, in addition to the cocaine. Well, not that it was an unusual amount, just that they found it. Yeah. Right? Um, and she wasn't prescribed anything like that. So where she would have had that medication is a question, but at the same time, this is a woman in a high-stress job, obviously stressed enough that she was taking recreational yeah, drugs in high knew, quantities. They knew they, that she also suffered from anxiety. And she, both of her parents had died. There is an explanation for why she may have had access to them. And been using them. Right. It could be suspicious. But again. But also not. It's also possible that it's not. Yeah. It could be. It could be something. It could be nothing. We don't know. The second thing that comes back is the detective chief inspector does confirm that, yes, the police did go around to her house after Brodsky's suspicious death. She was interviewed. She was interviewed, was very happy to talk to them. While recovering from the flu still. But that brings up further questions. Also, doesn't necessarily mean anything at yeah, all, right? Yeah. If this meeting was really important, maybe she came while she was still recovering from the flu. It's possible. Right? We know people who have gone on stage being violently ill, been able to perform like nothing was wrong, and then walk off stage and throw up. Yeah. Right? Like, stage health is a thing. I can imagine putting it on for it's, a meeting also being a thing. It's like Leslie Nope in Parks and Rec. <laughs> Yes. In that flu episode, she's, she's delirious. Completely lost her mind. And then goes up on stage and delivers a pitch perfect speech. Uh, speech to like the Chamber of Commerce and then gets off stage and immediately is just like, hello, and, Mr. President. Yeah. And like I'm, practically and passes talking out. to a plant. And it's it, because you have that stage health. Yeah. You're on it. You're focused. You go and then you're done. And it is exactly like you say. It's possible that the meeting was important enough that she was like, I just got to tough it out. Yeah. She just pulled it together for for the one night and then went back home and passed out. Yeah. Because if it had been an imposter and not the real Dr. Styles, and the real Dr. Styles was interviewed, she wouldn't know about having been at Windsor Castle. That clearly wasn't the case. Whoever the police spoke to was informed. Right. So there's that. Right. She also receives word from the security office that everything was double-checked. The security was on the ball that night. There, It was a clandestine meeting. The queen was in residence. There shouldn't have been any lapses in security. And there weren't. And there weren't. Everything was checked. Everything was double-checked. Everybody was cleared. And then she gets the worst news of all. Ugh. Which is that... From Humphreys. Humphreys reports that MI5 has discovered that Sandy Robertson, Robertson. her page was found to have purchased a pair of lacy underwear similar to the ones found on Brodsky when Identical, he was found I believe they said. Yeah. So like a year ago though. Yeah, they're close the, it, basically the the noose is closing in on him. Yeah, they found some evidence some that, circumstantial yeah, evidence. But it does point towards Sandy Robertson and she hates that. Yeah. It's awful. Well, and the question is why would he have been buying lacy under things? He's a widower. Also, it was a year ago. Yeah. I seriously doubt that this is the long con. This brings me to a thing uh, that I want to discuss with you right now. Because you've mentioned mentioned a couple times in previous episodes that if Brodsky's murder was meant to look like a suicide, they did a pretty bad job of it. And I'm actually now at the point where I'm thinking, what if it wasn't a bad job? What if it was someone trying to make a suspicious suicide so that it would look like a murder so that they could frame someone. Because at the moment, it's working very well. Yeah. All of the authorities are dead set on it being Sandy Robertson. The only person who's convinced it's not is the queen. True. But everyone else is convinced that it has to have been an inside job, that it has to have been someone on the queen's staff, and that it looks like it was this guy. If someone was attempting a frame job, to make it look like a sloppy suicide, quote unquote, to frame someone for murder, they've actually done a great job of it. Yes. If that was the motive of the setup, then yes, they're doing a great job because MI5 can't find their murderer. They're pointing fingers at a couple people and they've got some sketchy evidence for it. Yep. 
But they haven't found anybody. And we still don't know if Dr. Styles was somehow involved in this. At the moment, it's, it's certainly from the Queen's perspective, it's looking like she's been chasing a red herring. Yeah. I don't think she has. No, because she's a super sleuth and she recognizes something's up. She just yeah. can't prove it or piece it together yet. Right. There's still a couple things missing, right? Yeah. But from where the Queen is standing right now, it looks like a hopeless case. Because it looks like the stuff with Dr. Styles is a dead end and is completely unrelated. And it looks like there's no way to clear Sandy Robertson's name. Right. And she's running out of time. Because, because her self-imposed deadline is coming up. She's got just a few days. Yeah. So. I don't know. Let's let's be hopeful that new things come to light in the next day or two. <laughs> or she has another aha moment. Maybe. Yeah. Or maybe this gets solved after the weekend. Who knows? She maybe doesn't she solve just... it in time, but something about the Obama visit. Maybe. Ma makes like the penny drop. Maybe she solves it. Maybe she just doesn't do it in time. Who knows? I don't Who know what's knows? happening right now. It's great. Yeah. It's truly mystery. Yeah, I trust her instincts enough to believe that there is something going on here. She just hasn't managed to, like, thread the needle, as it were. Yeah. She she can see the broad outline of something, but she can't put the puzzle together. No, it'll happen. Yeah. It'll happen. It has to. And it will. I feel good about it. I trust her. It's, it's a tricky puzzle. Yeah. Yeah. I like it. One might call it a sticky wicket. I just wanted to note about how much I loved the uh interaction between her majesty and rosie mm -hmm. when they're talking about the case really quickly because it gets it gets to the point where the queen doesn't need to finish her sentences because rosie has already picked up what the queen is putting down yeah right she's like and i don't need to say no ma'am you don't like rosie's got it she's on it yeah I'm like rosie is in this with both feet and i think it's great yeah i love it yeah, the queen is also very clearly pleased with her. So. Oh, and they, they're building on this wonderful rapport, and I really want to see where it goes, because I quite like it. I would I would watch the BBC series of this. Ooh, me too. Yeah, like a, what, eight to ten episode series? Sure, why not? I'd watch it. I'd we'll, watch that. We'll have to discuss it like in, a, in our final analysis. Indeed. But. Like the, the, I was going to say the British version of Miss Marple. That's not. Yes, <laughs> it would be like. The British, the British version of Miss Marple. Of Marple. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it was wrong before it even left my mouth. Like, no, 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 no. Perfect. What a what an excellent <laughs> note to end this episode on. You'll want to read up on chapter 18 in time for next week. Uh, in the meantime, of course, as always, give us a little rating and review on your podcatcher of choice because that helps us out. And we appreciate it. We do. We also appreciate interactions via social media. Absolutely. Uh, we are still on the app formerly known as Twitter. I believe it's officially called X now. Um, we're on Facebook. We're on Instagram. We're still on Goodreads. We are at the read along on most of those, so you can find us. Yeah, well, you can also uh, send us an email. Absolutely. We are the read along at gmail.com. And with that said, as always, we love you very much, and we'll see you next time. One is just like Miss Marble. Thank you for joining us on The Read Along with your hosts, Anita and Scott Bourgeois. All Read Along music is by Kevin McLeod at Incompetech.com. Cover art is by Aaron Beaver. Be sure to join us on Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook at The Read Along, and check out our group on Goodreads.com.